Flying all the basic necessities to the lunar outpost every few months is simply too costly. So humans must take another approach. It's very important that when we return to the moon, that we do it with a mindset that is based on a frontier approach, a mindset that says, what can I do with the resources and materials that are here so that I don't have to bring them all the way from the Earth? So step eight for the moon dwellers is to find those resources locally. Surprisingly, one place may be right underfoot. I got your geology training did come in handy. The only geologist ever to wield his hammer on the moon is Harrison Schmidt. You learn where to hit rock. That's it. He and other scientists recognize that the same dust or regolith that poses such a threat to astronaut health and equipment also contains a treasure trove of valuable minerals. Copy that. If you heat that regolith to, say, 700 degrees centigrade, some of it will react with the oxygen in the minerals of the regolith and the glass of the regolith and come off as water. An intense effort is now underway to learn how to extract these riches within the lunar regolith. Back on Earth, a NASA team is experimenting with a new process on the slopes of Mauna Kea volcano in Hawaii. We found that the soil at that site is relatively close to the chemistry of the soil of the regolith on the moon. They're working to produce not just water, but oxygen. This dust, which will be several inches thick on top of material like this on the lunar surface, is the product we are mining in the beginning of our process for utilizing resources on the moon. They test out an experimental vehicle designed to turn pulverized rock into oxygen, hence its name, Roxygen. So what we're doing in Hawaii, we have a rover that scoops up some of the soil, dumps it into a hopper. Inside the vehicle, the soil is heated to a temperature of 900 degrees centigrade. The metal oxide in the soil reacts to give off water vapor. Within this water vapor is the crucial element, oxygen. When fully developed, the Roxygen system will consist of an autonomous rover fitted with a scoop. The rover will transport the lunar dirt to a conversion plant, where the water produced is separated into hydrogen and oxygen. So the resources for humanity's expansion, once we get up there irreversibly, will come from this uh, lunar hardware shop. But those critical resources are found only in small quantities out on the exposed slopes. Scientists believe more abundant reserves may lie in the South Pole's deep, dark craters. They're cold traps. They're permanently shadowed areas that, that trap uh, things like water ice. It might have come from comets that impacted the moon. Since four liters of water costs $80,000 to launch into space, finding large quantities on the moon would be a huge bonus. If you think about where are the equivalent of the Saudi oil fields in our universe, if there is frozen water on the South Pole of the moon, that's it. But tapping into this resource won't be easy. It'll require step nine of the lunar mission. Developing a vehicle that can cover long distances and descend crater walls deeper than the Grand Canyon. Boy, there's a, it's really rolling hills, Joe. The longest distance that they could travel from their lander was about 10 kilometers. And when we have the outpost, we need to be able to traverse to explore longer than just 10 kilometers. So we're working on a pressurized rover concept that will allow the astronauts and the crew to really traverse 100 kilometers, 200 kilometers. And two sample bags, that would be ideal. But operating in remote areas of the moon will be risky. Get far enough away from home, and getting stuck or breaking down could prove fatal. In the rugged terrain of the Arizona desert, astronauts test whether the rover can get out of tough situations. Copy that? Each wheel can turn on its own. It's a really a safety function. 
because if they get into an area that they just can't back out of, the rover can walk sideways, backwards with, with a zero degree turning radius. And this new rover has other features essential for long trips. Inside the pressurized cabin, the two-man crew doesn't need spacesuits, and the vehicle can support them for up to two weeks. So, uh, where do you want to head? Let's go over to that crater. Okay. One of the features of this cabin is that there's a small uh, bubble here in, in the front window. And so you can actually stick your head or stick a camera out uh, when you drive up close to a rock. When the crew finds something outside they want to take a closer look at, they can slip into a spacesuit attached to the back door. Part of the door becomes the backpack containing the life support system, allowing them to scoop up the sample and take it back to base. Even if they're successful in finding water and making oxygen from regolith, these early moon dwellers will still have to use resources sparingly. Astronauts will live in a tightly controlled environment that keeps waste to a minimum. Over 90% of the water they consume is recycled, which means that the coffee they drank yesterday morning will be simmering in tonight's soup. Their environmental and climate control system removes excess carbon dioxide and moisture from the air. It recycles the water and pipes the CO2 into the greenhouse next door. Once we are able to get access to oxygen and water, there will be the ability to grow food. You'll bring seeds. Then we have to bring some nitrogen and you'll grow foods. And the oxygen produced by photosynthesis from that food is returned to the living quarters. It's now 2040, and through a deliberate series of steps, America's established a permanent outpost on the moon. And like any new settlement, this outpost needs a fresh wave of immigrants. So that we can keep going. And so that we can take that beachhead that they create on the moon and expand it into new communities, new activities. Other nations and businesses will quickly follow, moving beyond the South Pole in search of profit or a strategic edge. The things that we fight wars about on Earth today are metals and mineral rights, energy rights, real estate rights. Those are the resources that are in space. And on the moon, the real race for our nearest neighbor is just beginning.